because people think that God knows what we are eating today. Is it correct or not? So food-wise you are zero. Best thing is to live in the villages or in the forests, to get the fresh fruits, wash them in clean flowing water of a river, eat it nicely and sit down enjoying the sun. The comfort of the Spirit is the thing we have lost. And those who seek the comfort of the Spirit are Sahaja Yogis, not otherwise. Comfort of the Spirit comes in giving. Say, I have borrowed some money from you. I won't be comfortable till I have paid you back. Going further with it, supposing you are caught up into something, you have got some problems. I'll somehow or other manage that you'll come close to me somewhere and work it out on you, clear you out, finish it. Till then I won't be comforted. Though I'll suffer, I'll have pains, I'll have this. As soon as I came here, left Nabi was like this, going on, corrected it. I took it upon myself, I sucked it into me, so they are adventurous. Oh, I will not touch, I am catching, he is catching, finished. But now the compassion can only work out if you have that kind of a spirit, otherwise you cannot. It becomes sympathy. For example, there is one person, Mr. A or Miss A or Mrs. A, whatever it is, I mean, I am talking of a common personality, and that person is catching. I would say in an ashram that person should clear out. But the, all the ashramites will catch from that person and that person will never be all right. There is a very nice joke about it. There was a lady, she wanted to reduce herself. So there was a machine like a rolling pin. They said, if you rub it, then you will reduce. So she brought, poor thing, she brought the machine and she started rolling it. She found that the rolling pin became fat. <laughs> Instead of she reducing. Same thing is in Sahaja Yogi. Instead of Sahaja Yogi is correcting the others, they get contaminated. That's why I said, don't have anybody in the ashram, because you sympathize. You do not try to correct that person. In a way that you can correct within yourself, suck it within yourself as your mother does. And I do it for thousands and thousands and thousands. You have to do it for one or two, so you are never bothered. And that's how you become strong, not by shunning them, running away from them, or condemning yourself, or saying that we must save ourselves from the world. No, through adventure. Let's see what happens. Dumar was telling me, nothing catches me, mother, what is it? I said, which who will catch you? <laughs> Those who will catch will be hurt themselves. So what is it that Bhairava is to be established? Siddha Kela Bhairava. As you have to establish Sri Ganesha, you have to establish also Bhairava and Hanuman on the right side. If these three deities you establish within yourself, nothing, nothing on this earth can catch you. You get it for a while. But what I find now, I came to this ashram, everybody's left Nabi caught up. Everybody's left Agya caught up. So then I get the pain. Everyone, I mean, yeah, I have put you inside my body, do you know that? You are part and parcel of my body, you are the cells in my body. And when you catch, I also catch, not catch, but I really get the pain, but I clear it. In the same way, I have given you powers. Every power I have, I have given you. But you have to develop it. And you have to be adventurous. But on the contrary, once we have ashrams, everybody settles down, oh, now very comfortable, very cheap, <laughs> very economical, that's the first comfort. It's surprising for a Western person, it is very important that it should be economical. Surprising, affluent people think more of saving money than the people who are poor. And English are the last word, save pounds. 
at the cost of others. <laughs> On the contrary, if you go to India, or oh, they'll be very happy, they'll invite you in their house. Whatever they have, they will give it to you. Eat, 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 they'll force you. They'll be very happy to give. But in England, it's very dangerous. You see, sometimes in the ashram, they may not even have food for me. My goodness. Really? And if you tell them, I know, I know, you know, finished, then what do you say? You already know it, now what to do? They know it. So with the affluence, miserliness grows and money orientation. In India also I've seen people who get little more money than the rest become very money oriented. Money becomes everything, money becomes the power, money becomes their life. Sahaja Yogi doesn't care for money, just it's the dust of our mother's feet. What is money? What is wealth? And when they do like that, then their money problems are solved. If you have a money problem, know that there's a problem. If you are very particular about money, I am, in a way, because if I have to give somebody, I remember it. But I've seen people who are very anxious to tell me that you have to pay this man so much, that man so much. That's wrong. That's not your lookout. That's very, very wrong to tell me that you have to pay this man or that man. It's not important. Even if I don't pay, I pay. So in relationship with me, you are not to tell me that you have to pay so much money to him, this much money should be paid, this is what he owes you, nothing of the kind. Let the person come and tell me. Why are you telling? That kind of a message, if you give me, you are lost. Or if you come and tell me for somebody else that, Mother, time is up, we have to go, somebody is hurrying up. If somebody is hurrying me, tell him, don't hurry, Mother. You must know that your Kundalini's were not raised with just your own Kundalini, but something that is working it out something very tremendous, a big organization. You can't see it, it is microscopic. You must know, nobody got realization like that, did they? Thousands getting realization, what's happening? There must be something about... Now, how can you tell anything to such an organization? They don't like it. They know it. Actually, they are the ones who know, not the English. They know what is to be done. So your relationship with me acts as your culture. So it is a mother's cult, you can call it, the mother's culture. How we are connected with our mother. I have seen people, if somebody is rude to them, they get very angry. But if somebody is rude to me, they don't feel angry. It should be the other way now. Now I'll give an example. This Murph Griffin was funny, and both of our PROs were very angry. It was natural and very, I mean, I liked it, but I calmed him down. And Warlikar, of course, was on top of his, <laughs> this thing. But the other fellow would not. He was giving arguments. I was just watching. I mean, if somebody had said this to his mother, there's another one there, he never came to receive me at the airport. So Warlikar said, if your own mother had come, you would not have gone. Then one can give explanation, no, but our mother is Adi Shakti. My mother is not, she's helpless. It's not to show your respect, to show your love, you have to go for your own gain, not for her gain, for your own gain. This relationship is for your own gain. Supposing if you strike oil, is it for your gain or for the gain of the oil? <laughs> if you Get to the source. Is it for the source to gain anything or it is for you to gain anything? I mean, logic, simple logic. 
So in that culture, you see, you really thrive and you become extremely a happy person, a joyous person. And the expression of such a person is so different, because such a person, as I told you, rises above and sees the problems of others, the decadence of the society, sees all the problems of the world. Not only that, but knows the solutions. We are not like these ordinary people who have racialism, these other diseases, I don't know what sort of diseases they have, I also forget. Racialism now, it's another stupid nonsense, you know. What is racialism? God has made somebody's color like this and somebody's color like that. And those same racists are trying to tan their faces. So, in this culture of ours, we are not bothered about superficial things. What we are bothered about is our inner, inner cleanliness, inner beauty. But that doesn't mean that you should move about like uh, primitive people, no. But if there is inner beauty, then outer beauty comes. You will never find Me dirtily dressed. You will never find Me without a sari. Even when I sleep, I wear a sari, because in the night also I have to work, so how can I go in My dressing gown to the other world? <laughs> so a person who is a Sahajogi has to be an extremely neat and a clean person, but not to tell others, but should be himself or herself. That's one of the things are very important, because others will see you like loonies, who is going to believe you? So the one effect is from the mother you take from the source, for what? To be that illuminated quality in you, so that others see you as something great and adore you, worship you. This is this far we have come. Now, how your Personality should but now, when you are dealing with others, know that they are human beings made by God, not by Sajogis, by any chance. And they will be tomorrow Sajogis, maybe higher Sajogis, Sajogis than you. So when we are dealing with others, also talk to them in a gentle way. Be kind to them. Of course, we are against gurus, against cults, against all these people. But as soon as they come, if you say, Oh, you are a Bhut, the person will do right about turn and go away. So you are not given this power to be abrupt or to be arrogant with others, not given. Now all such people are coming down, coming down, because they see that what helps is your gentle, kindly, firm attitude. Only after Sahaja Yoga you can combine all these qualities. You'll be firm, you'll be alert, you'll be gentle and compassionate, smiling, but not making fun of others. So then you become a Personality who is alert to see what is the reaction they are having on others. This is very important to be seen. So now you start witnessing others. What is your reaction on others? I have seen many a times new Sajogi comes in. Person is trying to say something and the girl starts giggling or laughing. One should not at that time, because the person might think that they are making fool of Me or they are thinking that I am a stupid person or something wrong with Me, that person will become self-conscious, I won't be able to give Realization to that person. But if somebody is sitting before Me and I'm trying to help that person, know that it's a very important moment of this gentleman's life. We have got it, so what? When we are pulling out somebody, 
when we are helping out somebody, do we laugh? That's the time. You have to be very concerned and very much serious to do the job. Every quality and mood has its own place, like nose is at its own place, eyes at its own place. In the same way, all these moods that we have, have their own places. And that is what is lost in modern society. So when I am trying to help somebody, you should be all concerned about it. How does this come in to us from the Source? How much you are concerned about Me? Supposing I am thirsty, you will feel thirsty. You will immediately say, Mother, I will get you some water. Or you may not even ask Me, just bring it here, keep it there. Or just make some tea for Me, or look after Me, do this or do that. In little, little things you should watch. The concern is not in saying something, asking something. You don't ask. Don't ask, Mother, you just do it. That's how when you start doing it, you will understand what you are doing to others. So the reflection on others, how they reflect about you also is very important and you have to be alert. Suddenly you say something and everybody disappears. You must know they are not yet Sahaja Yogis, they have to be brought in. So you have to very carefully bring them around. Then with Sahaja Yogis, among yourselves, how you behave is extremely important for others to see. We must cherish each other's company, we must cherish. To meet some Sahaja Yogi somewhere, oh, what a joy it is to see someone, to talk to someone on the phone. But because we are so insular, so selfish, so greedy, and sometimes very uh, circumcised, I should say, or absolutely engulfed into our past, that we cannot do that. We do not feel that joy, we cannot adore another Sahaja Yogi. We do not enjoy another Sahaja Yogi, we cannot cherish his company. That means you, this finger cannot feel this finger. It's like developing what you call a disease called leprosy. Nerves are finished, nerve endings are not there, you cannot feel the joy of other Sahaja Yogis. And this is only possible if you get over your personal interests. When people come in Sahaja Yoga in the beginning, they have personal interests. Like, uh, say, somebody is trying to su sell something, so they would like to sell it to Sahaja Yogis. Or they are arranging something, they would like Sahaja Yogis to do it. See, personal interest, to use Sahaja Yogis for their own purposes. As a result of that, I've seen some people become so insular that nobody helps them, no work is done by them. If there's a telephone, nobody will say, I'll get it. They'll say, that's American quality, they'll say, I'll get it, they'll regard it good. Not in England, they'll be all sitting quiet. <laughs> Even when he, they have eaten the food, they have to pay the money, they look this side. <laughs> and some poor Indian student will pay for all of them. They won't go. So, now paid, now they are normal. <laughs> it's very low level, it's extremely low level behavior. And this is what one has to learn that you have to cherish others, give presents to others. You're going there, oh, now, like the other day, I met a lady, she had liked my, one of my rings of emerald. That's my family rings, I can't give away. I'll have to ask CP. 
and he may not like it because after all I have no right on it, I have to give it to my children, all right? But I found an emerald somewhere, beautiful, so I kept it with me. The other day when I gave her, she was so enamored. I said, you liked my ring, I couldn't give you my ring. So she said, you mean to say I would have taken your ring? I said, I would have forced it on you, but I couldn't give you. So I thought of it, I just saw it somewhere, so I got it for her. I said, how thoughtful, but it's all in my head. I, whenever I get it a chance, you see, so somebody says, oh, I like it, keep it in mind. Next time, even a flower, you must cherish their companies, because it's such a great thing to have somebody who understands you or your spirit, and they have the spirit, such a great thing. How can you be unkind to each other? That hurts me the most of all. And the first thing and the foremost thing you have to give me is congenial, beautiful, loving group, that they love each other. If that's achieved, that you really love beyond your personal considerations, I mean, of course, in Sajjaga there are now not many people who try to make money, but try to make comfort for themselves. They must have the best room, they must have the best place, they must have... I didn't get this, I should have it, this, that. Try to do more than others, I know. Sometimes people take advantage of it, but they will go out of Sajjaga very soon. So be sure that you become generous about it, very generous. And generosity should start from your own Sahaja Yogi brothers and sisters. In the culture of Sahaja Yoga, we have to have a full imbibement, bubbling through our nerves, the sense of chastity. That is a must, whether you like it or not. There should be no bad intentions about any other person of relationships which are not pure. Absolutely pure relationships, pure eyes, without any adultery, adulteration I would call it. Clean eyes is the basic of surgery. State fast, clean eyes, because your eyes are very powerful, you don't know how powerful they are. So to make it that way, to practice, move your attention inward and towards this first time. You can. With your eyes you suck it. Even while looking at Me, with the Shraddha, with the joy, you just suck it inside my image, put it on your sastara, put it in your heart. You can do it. It's very joy-giving. When you put it in the sastara, then you get the knowledge. When you put it in your heart, you get the joy. And when you put it on your liver, then you get the power of action. From the photograph also, you can do it, suck it, move it. But that is shown in the way you behave towards others, completely confident, gentle, no arrogance, neither the neck up like that or like that, but in the center, in a very dignified way. So, in the culture of Sahaj, because the Spirit is the dignity, is the majesty, is the glory of God, you have to judge yourself, did I say something which is not respecting My Spirit? 
Did I do something that is not glorious? Like I've seen people, when I'm there, they'll go and ask me hundred questions. Should it be white towel, green towel? Should I do this? Should I do that? Why? Because we don't live with choices. We live what, whatever we get it, and there is dignity in that. If you start doing choices, it's stupid. In a group of Sahaja Yogis, the food, what will you have? They'll take forty-five minutes to decide if you go in a restaurant, because the first the consciousness we are paying for it, and somebody will have this, somebody will have that, the poor waiter will run away. Why, why should we have different? It's just the same. What your mother is having, we'll have finished. But if not that, at least whatever everybody is having, why have separately? Choices are not there in Sahaja Yoga. Remember this word very clearly. Choices of this, choices of that. I don't like it, I like that, this is not good, that is not good. Because we need everything. On the level of vibrations, then the choices come in. Like if the vibrations are not good, we will not say it, but we will not have it. The thought question of whether green or red or yellow or white, and that is what they are making fool out of you. They will put one name, Cartier, finished. People will pay any amount for that Cartier. Is any ordinary stuff it is, nothing special. But you see that ego, I've got the karti, I've paid more to show that I've paid more, that I've been a fool. <laughs> to may, pay more for something that's so cheapish. That's what they're playing upon, remember that. So you have to understand that when you are a Sahaj personality, you have your own dignity. These things do not give dignity to you. You give them dignity. But that doesn't mean tomorrow you come like a clown or like a uh, limbo on your nose. Of course, I must see the other point of us because it just slips out that side. When you become dignified, you will wear always something that is dignified. You will do all that is dignified, is automatically you become dignified. It's nothing artificial. So, dignity that comes as you see your mother. Whatever you give me in puja, I take it, all right. But otherwise, you cannot give me anything else. If you give me, I'll return it somehow. Somehow, I'll return it. A person who is money-oriented cannot have dignity. Because you see him like a beggar. See, if this money-orientation is too much, he comes down to that level. You can see it, there cannot be dignity in that. A man who is power-oriented is an idiot. He looks like an idiot. So we cannot become idiots. All right, so we cannot be power-oriented. The one who is sort of a a uh, romantic or a love-oriented is a stupid fellow. He behaves like a stupid fellow. On the street they go on kissing each other all the time. Where are you going? To the divorce case, but last bit we are thinking or of having some kisses. <laughs> Self-respect is the thing. Self is your spirit, the respect of the spirit should give you that thing. But in privacy, you are gentle with your husband, you are gentle with your wife. You must learn how to be gentle with her in privacy, not in public. That's horrible, especially in India. I'm told that people go around with the romanticism and all that. So please don't do all those romantic stuff in India, it's very embarrassing for me, very embarrassing. So we cannot do things which embarrasses our mother. Once you start knowing that, 
This will embarrass mother. We can't do this. You, you automatically will be. So when it is related with me, immediately. What will mother think of in me? Is it this the way to behave towards mother? Immediately you will get the reward as that thing working through you. As if you become that nature. Sahaj culture is a Sahaj nature. Automatically you will do it. You will talk in that manner, you will speak in that manner, you will live in that manner. I mean, I have seen people who have never known me. On a trunk call or a telephone, they recognize. They know I'm something special. It is sensitive enough. From my photograph, the way I sit, the way I talk, immediately everyone asks. The other day I went for the meeting with my husband. Everybody was asking, Who is this lady? Who is this lady? Who is this lady? There's something in the personality. I talk to everyone nicely, I'm very sweet. We cannot be slavish and we cannot enslave anyone. We have to cherish, even human beings, we have to cherish because they are us. Not to despise anyone, not to laugh at anyone. In the culture of Sahaj, you have to become an expert, expertise. Expertise comes through your adherence to your mother. Expertise. You should be an expert. And who will give you the certificate is your mother only. Who else? I may not say so, but your spirit will say that. And not your ego. In a short time, whatever was possible, it's such a big subject, culture is. You cannot. But I've talked to you. I would not say in a very analytical way, but in a very synthetic manner. So I've given you a very synthesis of the whole thing. Analytical would be one, two, three, four, five, cut short. Two, three, four, five, like that. It's not like that. And that is how you have to speak to people. One, this is so. Two, this is so. Three, this is so. Finished. You're not so joking. In your speeches, if you talk like that, finished. But before saying something or doing something, give a little idea where you are leading the people, so they are not frittered away. Attention is not frittered away. Give a little idea, as I say, or else while talking, bring them to a point which is important so that they wait in the sentence to come to that point, but make the whole sentence look so that it is going towards certain points. So always a Sahaja Yogi must make a point out of what they talk, not just babbling, talking. What is the point you are going to make? Whatever they do, they have to know what are we going to achieve out of it. In a marriage, what are we going to achieve out of marriage? A family, house, everybody has. Even a donkey has that. What's so great? We are going to achieve a family unit where realized souls are to be born. We are going to look after them in a proper way. And then we are going to emit that unit. into this world like a sparkling diamond set in the beautiful setting of a family, giving light to the whole world. So one, life should not be pointless and talk should not be pointless and any moment should be filled with achievements of your visions and dreams slowly and steadily, which is not at all difficult. If you can get rid of ego and superego, finished, that's all. Simple as that. <laughs> May God bless you all.
Oh, good. Nice. Relaxed, eh? Relaxed. Good, yes. Everyone cleared out, I think. And no more, one more thing, I must say, last. I have said it before, which I have not said here. No one is going to say that Bhut did it, because such a person will be sent away to the Bhut clan, not to Sahaja Yoga. Don't put your responsibility on the Bhuts. Either you are a Bhut or you are a Sahaja Yogi, one of the two. You can't be both.